Welcome back to Smoke Your Ribs. I'm Russ Jones. Today I'm going to be doing a whole chicken buffalo style. Going to be incorporating the brand new product from Pit Barrel Cooker. It's the Pit Barrel Junior. We'll be right back. We're going to start this with just the basic buffalo chicken wing type recipe and that's 50% butter. I have 50% melted butter, real butter, and you want to add 50% hot sauce. A lot of people use like Frank's Red Hot Sauce, Durkee Red Hot. I like, I like the Louisiana style hot sauces like the Crystal or Louisiana brand. Either one will work. I've got a quarter cup of butter so we're bringing this up to a half a cup. This is our injection. Give this a good mix. It's only a four pound chicken, so this injector is going to be perfect for that. Just like we did on the turkey the other day, you want to inject your breast meat. The object is, is to inject close enough to where you're going to get some of this in every bite. Here's a little tip. If you have one of these little cheap injectors like I'm using today, that rubber in there, if you noticed earlier, I was having a hard time sucking all that into it. Now it's very easy. Just put your little vegetable oil on there. This one's been washed and it's washed all that lubricant off. And that'll cure that. All right, I'm not going to bore you with injecting this entire bird, but basically, like I said, you want a really good coverage in your legs. I always like to do my wings as well, especially since this is taken from the buffalo wing recipe. I'm going to continue to inject this. We'll be back in a few minutes doing the rub. All right, I've got it fully injected. I used just about all of that injection. I'm just going to wipe off the excess. We're getting ready to rub it down with some oil and put a little rub on here that I think will complement the buffalo flavors. little oil just mainly for a binder. Alright, first component is a little bit of this Jacobson flake salt. I'm just estimating this. I'm going to say that's around a tablespoon. Into that I'm going to go in with about, it's about a teaspoon and a half of cayenne pepper, about a teaspoon of paprika, that's mainly for uh, color, and about a teaspoon of garlic powder. It doesn't have to be exact, as you can see, I'm not measuring this, I'm just guesstimating it. Now I have a chipotle chili that I'm going in, go in with about a teaspoon of that. Blend this up well. Just apply this generously. You don't want it too heavy. All right, now that I have these wings seasoned, I'm going to put these behind the bird. Just like that. A little bit more seasoning. And this is all we're doing for now. I've got to go outside, get the pit barrel cooker junior, fired up and ready. We'll meet you outside here momentarily. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. This is a brand new product from the pit barrel cooker company. This is the junior. This is the little brother to the original. Let me show you what the differences are. All 
Well, it's pretty obvious the difference is mainly the size. This one's a little bit taller. It looks to be about an inch and a half, maybe two inches taller. Not sure exactly on that. This has an 18 inch grate. This has a 14 inch grate. But one of the biggest advantages is the weight difference. I always consider this one pretty portable. This is extremely portable. It's gonna really come in handy for us. I know doing cooks down on the beach, off site and things like that. This will be my go-to cooker for such things as that. All right, everything is built as the exact same, but this is smaller. This will not hold as much charcoal as its larger brother here, and it still has the same add-on options as the bigger one. As you can see here, I have the ash pan connected to it. All right, it comes with a standard grate, and as an option, you can also get the grate, just like they have for this one, but only smaller, that has the flip open hinge so you could actually drop ribs in here and cook something on this grate as well, just like the bigger one. No difference, just only smaller. The Pit Barrel Cooker Company has been very busy. They have been coming out with a lot of products at the beginning of the uh, fall here. And one of those are these long skewers. This is designed to use as a skewer, but to hang in the Pit Barrel Cooker, either the full size or the junior. You simply put one of the stainless steel hooks that comes with your your cooker and you, you suspend them by the hooks. All right. They also have a shorter version of that. I haven't opened these yet. And they really did a major upgrade on this lifting tool that you would use to lift your stainless steel hooks out. Plus you have a convenient bottle opener there. That's really nice. All right, another great option that they have is they have covers for both of these models. And uh, I tell you what, these are really well built. If you look on the inside, it's completely rubberized. That's gonna prevent any water getting onto this. And the biggest problem I've had leaving this one outdoors is like rainwater blowing in through the uh, holes where the rebar goes. And if you don't use it in a while, you can actually, especially down here with all the humidity, you'll start growing mold in there and you have to burn your pit out. Well, this is gonna prevent that. In my opinion, where I live, this is a must have. And I've got one, as you've seen earlier, for both pits. All right, I won't be firing up this one today. I'm just doing that one chicken. This junior is gonna be perfect for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the process of firing this up, which is identical to this. We'll be right back. So just like on the full-size pit barrel cooker, you wanna almost fill up your charcoal to the top, not quite. We're gonna set that in. And the reason you don't put it all the way to the top because you wanna finish it with some lit charcoal. All right, you want to put your rebar in. The pit barrel cooker is designed to always run with the rebar in place. It's ventilation system, the way it pulls it in from the bottom and exhaust out the top, it's critical that you do this. Always keep them in place, even if you're not hanging meat. On with the lid, we'll see you in 20 minutes. We've been going about 20 minutes. I'm gonna take the lid off. I've got two kind of small chunks of pecan. It's not gonna take much on this one little chicken. We're gonna lay that there on the charcoal. All right, on with the chicken. Perfecto. These typically run around 275 to no more than 325. They, they are variable. It's pretty much a set it and forget it type smoker. The bigger one, I, what I've experienced in my use, typically around 275, 280. I've never seen it really get out of control, but I will say this, the more you open this and peek in at it, the more air you're gonna run in through the bottom vent and the hotter it will get. So it's best just to put that lid on and forget it until you think you're in the ballpark. I'm not gonna run thermometer wires in here and monitor this, I don't need to do that. In one hour, I'm gonna check this and see where we're at. And if we're not quite there, then we'll go from there. So you know what I hung that with was the short skewers that I showed you earlier. There's four in that pack. I thought there was only two and I got to read and it says four and sure enough, there's four of those. But the uh, longer ones, there's two and they're, they're probably almost twice this length here. But that's very handy to do a small chicken with. In addition, you know, if you didn't want to use these, if you had the turkey hangers, 
I've used those in the past. I did two whole turkeys on the larger model of the pit barrel cooker and those will do chicken just as well, just as easy. I know some of y'all would like to know and actually see it, what this is running. So I put an analog type thermometer just in through one of the vent holes there. And I'm riding around 270. Let's see if we can sit a little bit better here. Yep. And it's been holding like that the whole time. I've been going about 45 minutes. And per the manufacturer, I got it one quarter of the way open for sea level. That's your bottom vent. Never needs to be adjusted. You just set it for your elevation and forget it. And that's where she'll run. A true set it and forget it type smoker. We're going to do a temperature check. We've been going roughly an hour and a half. Give or take a few minutes. I'm going to remove this reed bar here. I'm going to pull this uh, chicken out. It's not a turkey. I'm done so many turkeys lately. Oh man, look at. Well, unfortunately, I had some corrupt footage where I brought this turkey in and carved it up. But I do want to show you this. This is so juicy. Look at that. That's breast meat. I mean, that is super juicy and super tender. Let's try it out. Mmm. Screams buffalo wings, man. That's one of my favorites. Here's an actual wing, which is also one of my favorites. Let me uh, pull that off. Let's try that. That skin actually has a nice crisp to it. I wasn't expecting that. Normally would would smoke chicken, you end up with like a rubbery skin. Nice little bite through on that. Amazing chicken and an amazing cooker. If you want something that's very portable, that can really knock out some outstanding food, you're not gonna beat a pit barrel cooker in that price range. I guarantee you that. Whether you go with the junior or the full size, you just can't go wrong. I use them quite a bit off camera when it's just a little simple meal that I'm wanting to do, a couple racks of ribs or whatever. That's normally my go-to because it's so easy and simple to run and it's not a big production. You know, it's just for me and my wife. So that's normally what I go with. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you check out this recipe. And until next time, smoke your ribs.